they work. All right, so um, for a chemical system, all right, whether it be a physical change or a uh, chemical change, uh, how you get a chemical system to do work is called pressure volume work. All right, that's how you get a chemical system to do work. Uh, and a good example of that is the, a piston inside of an internal combustion engine. All right, so think of a car. All right, it burns gasoline. Primary component of gasoline is octane. And of course, both octane and gasoline are liquid, right? And then they combine with oxygen, and they uh, make lots of moles of carbon dioxide and water. Okay, so they make lots of gas molecules. So we go from a liquid octane to lots and lots and lots of gas molecules, okay? And we know that gases take up a lot more room than liquids, right? And so the production of gas increases the pressure inside of that cylinder. And then additionally, uh, that um, combustion reaction produces a lot of heat, right? Combustion reactions produce heat. What happens to the volume of a gas if we increase the temperature of a gas? We had a relationship for that. We even had a law about that. Temperature and volume was Charles Law. It was Charles Law. And I checked this morning. Still good. All right. All right. So what was the relationship between volume and temperature? If we increase the temperature, what happens to the volume? It increases. It goes up. Okay. So we're cre increasing a lot of volume of gas or number of moles of gas. So we're making more gas molecules. And we're increasing the temperature. So the volume of that gas is going up. That creates a lot of pressure inside of that uh, cylinder. And then that pressure, of course, pushes that piston up. Okay. It applies a force. And it moves that piston in across, across a distance. So force times distance, that's our work. Okay. And then that piston goes and then does something, something, and then something, and then something else happens and the car moves. Okay. I'm a car guy. I know that sounds technical and everything. Like a flywheel. Flywheels do something. Rotors. Oil. It's technical. Okay. All right, but that's how you get a chemical system to do work, okay? It's called pressure volume work, all right? So we want to, of course, be able to quantify <coughs> uh, that. And so what we're going to do is we're going to combine a couple equations, all right? So we got our work equation from physics, okay, which is force times distance. And it is so much faster to do down here, but I keep on forgetting. And then pressure, when you think about the pressure uh, for gas molecules, it was the force that the gas molecules hit the subject over the area. So force over area. All right, and so uh, the volume of this cylinder, if we're talking about a volume cylinder, is the area of the cylinder's surface times the height. <coughs> when we do work, of course, we're going to push that distance, and that height is going to change. So you could put H or D, and actually I do. I want to put D. So area times the distance of that. So we're going to change that to D. Okay. After that chemical reaction happens, and that pressure forces that cylinder to move, the height of the cylinder increases, or we've, of course, changed the distance. So it changed the distance, okay? And so we can calculate the change in volume as the area times the change in distance, okay? And if we really think about it, for our work, we should go back here. It's where, where when we do work, we're applying a force across a distance. We're moving it some distance. So we can also use delta D over here. So force times delta D equals work. Okay. So what we can do is we can rearrange this equation for force. So force equals the pressure times the area. All right, 
And so if we take our work equals force times delta D, or change in distance, all right, we could plug that force equals pressure times area into that equation, couldn't we? So now we got work equals pressure times the area times delta D, change in distance. And when we talked about the change in volume of our symbol our, of our cylinder, rather, we also had change of volume equals the area times the change in distance or the area times the change in height. Okay? So we could plug this area times the change of distance to the change in volume. So now we got work equals the pressure times the change in volume. So that's how we can quantify work, is that we measure the pressure of the atmosphere, okay, if we're doing the work on Earth, which we usually are, and measure the change in volume of our system, and we can get work. The only thing is we gotta make the signs make sense, okay? If the system is causing the work, the volume to change is doing work, okay? The volume goes up. So that change in volume is gonna be positive. The volume's getting bigger as it's doing work. As you're doing work, are you gaining or losing energy? If I open this door, am I gaining or losing energy? I'm losing. See, I didn't even really open the door because I don't wanna lose that energy, okay? So think about how much that cost me, okay? So if I'm losing energy, when I do work, and if the system is doing work and therefore losing energy, what should the sign be? Negative, it should be negative. So it's actually work equals negative P delta V. Work equals negative P delta V. And now this is our handy dandy equation for quantifying work. All right, I know, I see it in your eyes. You've got a new handy dandy equation, you wanna try it out. All right, that's the first thing you're thinking of, you're reaching for your calculator, let's do this then. Okay, how about example 6.4? Okay, so to inflate a balloon, you must do pressure volume work. Okay, this is why in Gen Chem 1, when we were talking about gas laws, I'm not doing that, I'm not, I'm, that's a lot of work to inflate balloons. I'll like inflate, if I, you invite me to a party, which I'm available for parties, okay? I'll tell my friends that I definitely have, but, you know, I'll be at a different party, okay? I'll only inflate, inflate one balloon. That's all I'm going to do, okay? That's all I got the stamina for. All right, so you're doing pressure volume work. If you inflate a balloon from a volume of 0.1 liters to 1.85 liters, Okay, apparently that's a good sized balloon for your party, 1.85 liters. Against an external pressure of one atmosphere, we must have we must be having this uh, party on Earth. It's good. Okay. How much work is done in joules? All right, so let's do it. <coughs> All right, so our new handy dandy equation is work equals negative P delta V. So negative, what's our pressure? One, 1, 1.00. Atmospheres times our change in volume. What do you think the equation for change in volume is? Final minus initial, right? So everything's just gonna be final minus initial. So delta V equals final minus initial which, what's my final volume? 1.85. What's my initial? 0 0.1. And that equals 
Point one to one point seven five. Thank you. All right, so one point seven five liters. So negative one point zero zero times one point seven five is one point seven five. Negative. Almost got that right. What are my units? Atmospheres, not per liter, just liter atmospheres. Liters, atmospheres, liters times atmospheres. <clears throat> Is that what the answer uh, called for? No, I wanted it in joules. So we actually have to convert this. And so you'd have to look up the equality between liter atmospheres, that's pressure volume work, to joules, it happens to be on your equation sheet that I gave you yesterday, um, and now I have to try to recall it. Mm. It's like 101.4.3. Ah, never gonna live that down. 101.3. Liter atmosphere is equals one joule. Correct? Or is it joules equals one liter atmosphere? 101.3 joules equals one liter atmosphere? Okay. All right. So see, again, just me making sure you know how to read. All right. Joules equals one liter times atmosphere. All right. So once you got that, you look it up or it's on your equation sheet, it's pretty uh, straightforward. Just going to use that as a conversion factor. 1.75 liter atmospheres times one liter atmosphere, 101.3 joules per one liter atmosphere. So liter atmospheres cancel out and I'm left with joules. So for multiplication and division, we always go with the least. So that has three, that has four, so we should go with three. <laughs> yeah, you'd round it to three significant figures. That maybe, yeah, so just 1.75, I can tell it's going to be over 100, not quite 200, maybe it's so 177, negative 177. 177 point what? Point two? 177. Sig figs again. High five. Always fun stuff. All right. So, of course, we're talking about a problem involving a balloon. And so I gotta test to see how well I can draw a balloon with the tablet. I know on pen and paper I can oh I can draw a mean balloon. If you remember Gen Chem one. If you didn't have to put up with me in Gen Chem one, you just have no idea what's in store for you. Okay, but I'm I am a little bit nervous. Okay, pen is not not I'm not feeling it just yet. All right, but let's try it. Actually I know I'm gonna nail it. All right. So you start at one point. All right, that's a balloon, okay? Now, we're in Gen Chem 2, okay? So we gotta up our game, all right? You didn't think I could up my balloon game, but I can, okay? If you wanna get a little, like, accent to it, okay? A little, like, it's a shiny balloon, it's a nice sunny day, all right? Put a little square up in the middle. Uh, see, I didn't nail that. I'm not happy about that. 
No. So that's going away. Let's try that again. See, then I got cocky. That's a little better. All right, yeah. That's a little shine. Glare. All right. Okay, so that's how we do work. All right. So you can do heat. You can quantify heat in the lab by measuring temperature change, right? Temperature change. We can tell you which way the temperature is going, um, and you can quantify it. Now we can also go in the lab, quantify work by measuring the change in volume of the system. If you measure both, guess what? You know how much. If you know the heat transferred and the work transferred, what did you? What can you add up to equal? Q plus W equals what? Again, that's my bad ear. Delta change in energy, change in internal energy. So that's both. Those are both ways you uh, can transfer energy. So if you measure delta T, calculate Q, measure delta V, calculate work, add them up, you know how much the change in energy for the whole system was, okay? The sum of the both the Q and W, okay? <laughs> it turns out a lot of times uh, we don't want to do that. Okay, that's a lot of work. That's doing two things at once. Okay, measuring temperature and measuring uh, volume. Oh, slow down. Okay, so most of the time we can do experiments, okay, where we can basically isolate uh, uh, or figure out delta E based on just one of the variables, okay? And so one of the ways we can do that is we can do calorimetry at call constant volume, okay? So calorimetry, that's our word of the day, okay? So these are experiments that measure energy transfer. Measure energy transfer via heat. Okay, so think uh, the name stands for calor, calor, calorie. Remember, that's a unit for energy that we used to use a lot. Okay, we still do in uh, you know exercise science, nutrition, calories. All about the calories. We actually used to use uh, calories and actually or actually kcal's, kilocalories in chemistry all the time. I don't know when or why we switched to joules, but like my, when I was in high school, don't ask me when. Okay, it wasn't that long ago. Uh, I had uh, some teachers who would always uh, just talk about kcal's instead of joules. Okay, and when I first got here, we had a senior professor who usually used kcal's too. But anyways, we use joules now. Uh, so calories, that's our unit of energy. Metry, we're measuring. Okay, so calorimetry, we're measuring how many calories are transferred. We're measuring how much heat is transferred. Okay, so we can do it uh, two ways, at constant volume and constant pressure. At constant volume, it's nice because, okay, at constant volume, what do you think delta V would equal? Okay, if we design an experiment where we don't allow the system to change volume, what would delta V be? Zero, wouldn't change. So final minus initial, whatever we started out, delta V equals zero. Okay, so delta E for the reaction would be the Q, and sometimes you'll see a sub V to tell you it's at constant vol or at constant volume. I don't care. If we break up the uh, work equation, we got plus negative P delta V. All right. If delta V equals zero, what does work equal? Zero, yeah. Zero. Zero liters. Okay. So essentially at constant volume, the internal energy cha uh, change for the reaction is just equal to the heat. Okay. By us making a scenario, uh, we're not allowing the volume to change, the system can't do any work. If the system can't do any work, the only way it can transfer energy 
is via heat. And so, hey, we don't have to worry about that delta V anymore. Now we just have to measure uh, delta T, we get it at energy, okay? So that's one way we could do it. <coughs> the other way we'll do it is to talk about at constant pressure calorimetry, and that's what we talk about when we talk about enthalpy. Uh, but we'll have to leave that till uh, next time. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So what do we got going on next time? Okay, a quiz. We're going to have a quiz on Monday. It's on Chapter 6. Obviously, we didn't finish Chapter 6, so it's just going to be about the stuff we talked about this week. Okay, we should start studying, doing those suggested problems. So heat transfer, internal energy change, that kind of stuff. Okay, obviously, it won't be on enthalpy because we haven't talked about it yet. Okay, all right, we don't have a homework yet. That's next week. Next Sunday starts homework. Okay, so we'll see you on Monday. Both, usually. Let me stop this.